Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fordham University. It's an exciting day for Fordham men's basketball as a new era begins. Jeff Neubauer about to be introduced as a new Fordham University basketball coach. Great to be with you alongside Drew Casey, DJ Sixsmith on hand, and Drew for a program that hasn't won a lot the last couple decades. Jeff Neubauer is a guy with extensive experience and a great resume, and it should be a very interesting time here at Fordham University. It should be a very interesting time. Neubauer coming over from Eastern Kentucky, 10 seasons where he coached there out of the Ohio Valley Conference, won that conference twice, so he got to the NCAA tournament courtesy of the automatic bid twice, and three times to the, CI, to, to the CBI and CIT tournaments, which are new tournaments to postseason college basketball. Just this year, just six days ago, he was in the CIT quarterfinals, and now he's here at Fordham, so it's going to be exciting for the Fordham men's basketball team going forward from Eastern from Eastern Kentucky to Fordham University and let's get to know Jeff Newbauer. let's take a look at some of his experience starting back as a player at LaSalle now LaSalle was not a member of the Atlantic 10 back in the late 80s early 90s but still drew I mean a guy that's been at Richmond West Virginia with Kevin Pitt snoggle back in that 05 run and Eastern Kentucky for the last 10 years I mean this is as good as it gets for a guy coming into Fordham. It really is, and you look at those two uh, assistant coaching positions at Richmond and West Virginia, that's where he was a, an assistant to Jim Beeline, and there we'll get more on him later uh, on his resume and the coaching tree surrounding Beeline and all, but he has extensive experience. He's been, you know, around the, I guess you'd sort of call it the mid-Atlantic, sort of the Kentucky, <coughs> Tennessee area, Virginia, that's sort of the country, so maybe a little bit difficult for recruiting right away, but then he, he'll come up to New York here. His wife is actually from New Jersey just an old, over an hour away so he definitely has you know connections here in the local area but a lot of experience coming into this job here at Fordham well deserved for him getting the job nothing like a little home cooking for him with the wife coming back to New Jersey now of course Eastern Kentucky 10 years had a great resume the Ohio Valley Conference very difficult to compete in but yet over 180 wins won the OVC championship twice of course we mentioned the two NCAA bursts Nearly got a win against Kansas last year. That could have been something special. But a guy that goes to the postseason often, he's an intense guy. He's going to demand a lot of these players. But the record speaks for itself, Drew. The record certainly does uh, speak for itself. And the most impressive win probably came this year against the University of Miami. They traveled down to the University of Miami mid-December, and they beat the Miami Hurricanes, who are in the NIT semifinals tonight against Temple at the Garden. And they beat them by over 20 points on the road. This is an Eastern Kentucky school out of the Ohio Valley Conference and they play that well, and they beat the University of Miami. That's probably his best win as a coach, and it's, it's a great win to hang your hat on if you're a coach in the Ohio Valley. A guy that's certainly battle-tested, and of course in college basketball, Drew, you like to look at the coaching trees, and his career started with John Beeline, who's now at Michigan, who went to the Final Four just last year, was in the championship, and John Beeline really had some great words to say about Coach Newbauer. Let's take a look at what he had to say here. He said, quote, this is a great hire for both Fordham University and the Atlantic 10. Jeff Neubauer is one of the brightest coaches I've ever been associated with. His knowledge of the game, the players, and the recruits, along with his versatile coaching style, make him a rising star in the game. He and his staff have left a lasting effect and positive impact on the future of Fordham basketball. I mean, that is high praise right there from one of the best coaches in the country. And to be able to spend so much time with him, whether it was at Richmond or at West Virginia, these are two programs that have certainly grown a lot. And to learn from Beeline, I mean, as a coach, to just pick and choose little points, I mean, that is something he's going to be able to apply here at Fordham as well. Oh, it's incredibly huge praise just to get to your first point. Jim Beeline is just all around this country. His coaching tree extends very extensively. Now, of course, the head coach at the University of Michigan, Big Blue, trying to bring that program. And he's had great success with that program early on. Or He's been there for a couple years now, having success there. And, you know, the West Virginia assistant coach position belonged <laughs> to Neubauer under Beeline. And that is the job that propelled him into the head coaching position at Eastern Kentucky. And like I said, now he's here at Fordham after 10 seasons in the Ohio Valley Conference. So coming up in just a few minutes, Jeff Neubauer will be addressing the media for the first time here at Fordham University. Father McShane on hand, David Roach. Athletic director is here as well. It should be a very interesting day for Fordham basketball. And Drew, there's so many questions about the future of the program. The players will be here today. We don't know what this team is going to look like next year. We don't know whether Eric Pascal will be back. But as the team stands right now, if you're Coach Neubauer, you're coming into a situation where it's not exactly like you're starting from scratch. you got some players here that can compete. And this could be potentially a team that makes a little noise if everybody can stay together next year. Oh, they can definitely make a lot of noise. You saw some of the talent sort of come together nicely towards the end of the season, almost pulled off the upset against VCU in the Atlantic 10 tournament, which was their last game of the season. So the pieces are there. You bring in this new head coach in Jeff Neubauer. You hope that he can sort of re-recruit the players that are currently on the team, see what the current recruits coming in for next year, what their status would be. And then also Coach Neubauer has a heavy presence in 
sort of recruiting transfers, if you will, from mm. junior colleges. So we'll see if that plays a role down the stretch here at Fordham. But the pieces that he has now, if he can uh, help them to stay here and convince them to stay here under his new regime and some different styles of coaching, it'll be a very exciting time for this team. It's been a crazy two weeks for Florida men's basketball, from firing Tom Pecora to nearly signing Andy Toole to now hiring a head coach in Jeff Neubauer. That is set in stone. The rest of the future is not. But, Drew, what are you looking to hear from Coach Neubauer today? This is the first time he's going to be speaking. This is a guy that certainly brings a lot to the table, demands a lot. What do you want to hear from him in terms of what his future plans are and what he can do for this program? Well, the first thing I want to hear from him is how he's going to approach the whole uh, making a staff situation. Because mm -hmm. Fordham, of course, all those on the staff right now currently in flux as to what their position will be if there is a position. And then you also got to look at the Eastern Kentucky coaching staff. It's a different <laughs> conference. It's the Ohio Valley Conference. You're stepping up in games to the Atlantic 10. So you wonder if the pieces that are in place on his staff in Eastern Kentucky can possibly come over here. My guess is a few from each and then a few other additional pieces from outside Eastern Kentucky and Fordham will come on and compose this coaching staff. So I'm interested to see that. And I'm interested to also see what his plan for the immediate future is. Yesterday he got the players together a little bit of a workout. And right away. Call Didn't was waste a any time. Before he even was formally introduced. <laughs> at the press conference, uh, which is just going to start in a couple of minutes. So I'm curious what his immediate plans are in terms of the coach and who will make up his staff. Well, it should certainly be interesting to see oh, how sure. things shake out. But I think Same going forward, this is a guy that can certainly develop the chemistry he needs with players because he's coached some great players in the past. He's been around right, great yeah, coaches If everyone could well. take a seat, we're going to be starting in a few minutes. So everyone can grab a seat, please. Get things rolling. Joe DeBerry is at the podium, and here we go. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming in this exciting day as we introduce our new me head men's basketball coach. To get things started, I'd like to call up the Director of Athletics, David Roach. Thank you very much, Joe, and I want to welcome everybody. It's certainly an exciting day for Fordham, Fordham Athletics, and especially Fordham Basketball. And I want to thank you for joining us as we welcome Jeff Neubauer as Fordham's head coach of men's basketball. Before I bring Jeff, Jeff up to the podium, I would like to talk a little bit about the search process and thank some individuals that are here today. First of all, I'd like to thank Father Joseph McShane of the Society of Jesus and Jeff Gray, Senior Vice President, for their support and encouragement throughout the whole process. Thank you both very much. Uh, also like to thank uh, Charlie Elwood, where's Charlie? Charlie Elwood, Deputy AD, and John Barrett, Senior Associate AD. Where's John? Over there to my left. For their hard work and help with the logistics and certainly their willingness to drop everything and anything at a moment's notice to help with the logistics of the search. In terms of the search process, we began looking for a new coach on March 18th. And to be honest with you, I didn't really sleep until this past Sunday. Uh, decided when we were going to do the search uh, to do a national search and cast an extremely wide net. So with that in mind, we hired Parker Executive Search out of Atlanta, and we worked exclusively with Daniel Parker, Vice President and Managing Director. There were well over 50 coaches that we were interested in and many more that expressed interest in this position. I was very pleased at the level of interest and excitement that so many high quality coaches had for Fordham and our program. Besides the help of Parker Executive Search, I had many conversations with individuals with a high knowledge of intercollegiate basketball and also experience in college athletics. When I started the search, someone asked me, what do you look for in a coach, or what are you looking for? My answer is, it's the X factor. People want to know what it is. Can't explain it, but I can feel it when, I'm, when I see it and when I'm around it. It's someone who knows the game, someone who can motivate student athletes, an individual that's a teacher and a coach, an individual that can recruit, and somebody who will push student athletes to reach their full potential, both academically and athletically. 
Coach Neubauer, Neubauer has the, certainly has the X factor. When I was a young AD at Brown, I had the privilege of getting to know and become fr friends with Dave Gavitt, coach, athletic director, and founder of the Big East. Dave Gavitt's advice in looking for a coach, and in particular a head basketball coach, was you want to find somebody who you know what they are like when they have to make decisions. Certainly someone who's a head coach fits that bill. He also said something that was real important. You need to look at their pedigree. Who have they worked under and who have they played for? Jeff played for Speedy Morris at LaSalle and he coached with John Beeline. David Gavitt's advice has served me well and so many different coaching searches. Coach Neubauer graduated from LaSalle in 1993, holds an MBA from the Citadel. He was a graduate assistant at the Citadel for three years. Then he moved on to be an assistant coach at the University of Richmond for six years, one year in the A-10. They were in the Colonial prior to that. Then he moved with Coach Beeline to be an assistant at the University of West Virginia. He was there for three years. And when I look at experience and their pedigree, certainly there's nobody more highly respected than Coach John Belon. In Jeff's 10 years as head coach at Eastern Kentucky University, he had five 20-win seasons, including the last three. An overall record of 189 and 133, with five postseason appearances, two in the NCAA tournament. 2014, he was a finalist for the U Durham Award, and in 2013, he was selected as the NABC District 19 Coach of the Year. Coached 11 all-conference players, two OVC Conference Players of the Year, and two OVC Tournament MVPs. When Jeff and Karen arrived in New York on Sunday, we spent four or five hours here on campus and a couple hours at dinner. But as soon as I met Jeff, I knew right away we had the ideal person for Fordham. He's a native of Slidell, Louisiana, and I'd like all of you to please join me in welcoming Coach Jeff Neubauer to the Fordham Athletic family as our head coach of men's basketball. Jeff? So Jeff Neubauer being introduced, center of the floor, Dave Roach, Father McShane. Pictures being taken here for Jeff Neubauer as he starts his era as Fordham University men's basketball coach as Dave Roach heads back to the podium with Jeff Neubauer. It's great to have play-by-play -play back there in the back. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Hopefully the color analyst is not too critical of the coach. That's, that's what I'm asking for. Um, First of all, it's absolutely an honor to be standing here right now and to be the head coach at Fordham. Um, there are so many emotions that are involved in this process, and I shared a lot of this with the team yesterday morning. But my wife, Karen, who, because of the timing of, of this press conference, she's not able to be here uh, today, but she often talks about when a coach takes a new job and he goes from Eastern Kentucky University to Fordham, all he does is change t-shirts. And what she means by that is, one day you're coaching and helping young men get better and working on improvement with one group, and the next day you put on a Fordham shirt and you're helping a different group improve. And the, the real part of the joke is that what she's really saying is, the coach's wife is left behind to pack up the house, sell the house, do all the things other than just change a t-shirt. I want you to know that there's so much more, not only from my perspective, but from the university's perspective, that goes into this. And so over the last 72 hours, the roller coaster of emotions that I've felt is literally the greatest elation of, of being the head coach here at Fordham, 
but also it's sitting in my hotel room yesterday morning literally crying uh, about the group of young men that I'm leaving behind at EKU. And um, so it is a heck of a process. There is so much more to it than simply changing locations very quickly and changing your shirt. I, I was asked last night by a recruit's mother, you know, why Fordham? Why, why did you take the job? And there are so many reasons why this job was so appealing to me. The fact that I'm the head coach at Fordham University, the, the fact that I'm the head coach in the great city of New York, not only do I get to coach basketball, but I also get to live in the greatest city in the world. It's just too good. The biggest reason I'm here, and, and I could go on and on, there, there are 11 teen reasons why I want to be here. But the biggest reason is that I absolutely love challenges. And that is going to be the mantra of our program. Uh, we are fortunate one of our assistant coaches is here this morning, Rodney Crawford. If you guys don't mind, could you just give Rodney a hand just for making the trip here? <laughs> so between Rodney and myself and all of our student athletes, that's going to be our mentality, is that we absolutely love challenges, and that's why I'm here is to take on the challenge of rebuilding Fordham basketball. <clears throat> I haven't walked in here with a five-year plan. I shared with our team that we are walking in here with a one-year plan. We've got three seniors that we will absolutely play for next season. And so are there longer-term plans that will go into place? Absolutely, right? We're here to build a program. But more importantly, we're here to have one great season this year. And I truly believe after spending yesterday with these guys, that there are very special individuals in this group. I was blown away, impressed with the group of student athletes that are here right now. And what I mean by that is they were just locked in yesterday. We had a team meeting. We did individual workouts last night. And these guys are very hungry for success. And that is a great compliment to them. And I really look forward to coaching them. I do need to thank a few people. Um, Father McShane, thank you very much for this opportunity. Jeff Gray, thank you for your involvement in this process. Uh, Dave Roach, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I cannot wait to get started with this group. And uh, I started by mentioning my wife, Karen. I do want to thank her as well. Um, obviously, this is a great opportunity, not only for me, uh, but for us. And um, I look forward to coaching here at Fordham University. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. And again, thank everyone for coming. Uh, Coach and uh, Dave Roach will be available up here for the media for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, they'll also be going back and doing FUV. And I hope some of the players will stick around uh, in case you want to talk to some of the players. Again, thank you again for coming out. It's been a great day at Fordham. All right, so there you have it, folks. Jeff Neubauer, now officially Fordham University men's basketball coach. Welcome back here alongside Drew Casey, DJ Sixmith on hand. And Drew, I thought Coach Neubauer had a lot of great stuff to say about his plans. It's just a one-year plan. I love that. So many coaches think beyond the one year. They're thinking two, three, four, five years. But... He's focused on next year. He's focused on playing for the seniors. These guys may or may not be here next year, but that doesn't matter. And I thought it was also interesting as he considered his wife as well. You know, he just changed his shirts. He changes his hat. But his wife is still back home packing up the house and everything else, the life of a coach. But what stood out to you the most about what Coach Neubauer just had to say to everybody else? Coming in guns blazing. <laughs> I think it started, I assumed that he would say something like that, but a one-year plan, having practice and the, or the individual workouts as he referred to them last night. Very impressive that he's, you know, he's impressed with the athletes here, the student athletes that here are here at Fordham. They definitely have the talents on and off the court to be successful. Unfortunately, they just were unable to really mesh together this past season. But I'm very impressed that he thinks this team can do big things, not in five years, but in one year. He doesn't even have a five-year <laughs> plan. That, that's great to say. It's probably better that way, Come, honestly. It, it, it is because 
you know, it's gonna, the most interesting situation for me is going to be the recruiting situation. Mm. And you almost have to re-recruit your own players. So we'll see how that turns out. And if he can get these players to stay here at Fordham University, that one-year plan could be something very, very special at Rose Hill. Well, one question that was answered is that Rodney Crawford, who was his head assistant coach at EKU, is with him here at Fordham University. We don't know about the rest of the staff. Tom Parada, John Moore, and Mike DePauli were all here along with Steve Raisfeld, who was the video coordinator last year. So those questions are still left up there. But here's a guy that just came to campus on Sunday. He's already got the guys working out. And I, I loved what he said, that there are some special talents on this team. These players are motivated. They're hungry. Because let's face it, Drew, there have not been a lot of successful seasons, especially for these seniors. They've seen the highs, the lows, and a whole lot of lows. As we'll get Dave Roach coming back here later, Jeff Neubauer as well. But he's playing for these guys. He's a new coach. And Sometimes you're in a situation like this and you're thinking a coach is just trying to progress and take that next step. But he, from what I just heard, really has the intent in not only changing the face of this program because he loves the challenge. He said, I'm a guy that loves challenges. But also, he's ready to play for these seniors in their final season because he knows how bad it was the last couple of years for Fordham. And it's not only been the last couple of years. There's no denying that it's been rough really since yeah. Fordham has joined the Atlantic 10 Conference in the men's basketball department. The other, spo other sports have been successful in spurts as well. No, don't get me wrong there. Fordham should definitely be in the Atlantic 10 Conference, and they can compete in the Atlantic 10 Conference, as we saw down the stretch in this past season. But again, I it's, it's all going to depend on, for me, is who is on this team mm. next season. Is it going to be the makeup of the current team, except for the seniors, of course, who will graduate? Will it be the makeup of the incoming recruiting class? Will they still be coming here to Fordham University to play men's basketball? Another question is, possibly unlikely, though, because of the change in in caliber of Division One basketball from the OVC to the A-10. Will any players who maybe Jeff Neubauer recruited to Eastern Kentucky or are on Eastern Kentucky come here? I highly doubt it, but you never know. And then mm -hmm. he also has a high transfer uh, in terms of players on his team in Eastern Kentucky. Maybe some transfers come in um, and can play. You know, he might have to sit out a year because of NCAA eligibility rules, but if he's a graduate student or something, he might be able to get in right away. And, you know, you've got Ryan Canty coming back. A lot of stories coming on for this Fordham team, and Jeff Neubauer seems ready for them. He's going feet first into the water. And the other thing you have to consider, Drew, is also the recruits that were getting ready to come to Fordham and play for Tom Pecora. And Coach Neubauer already said that he had a meeting with a recruit last night and asking why Fordham. And he said that there are so many different reasons, but I loved also what he said about how he was literally crying in his hotel room about leaving his guys at Eastern Kentucky. Here's a man who had been there for 10 seasons, born in Louisiana. Yeah, he played Philly College basketball at LaSalle, but this is the biggest city in the world. This is New York. There is nothing else like New York City, and especially for college basketball, because while there are great talents in this city, Drew, a lot of them leave for better programs. So for Coach Neubauer, who's a guy, maybe a fish out of water by some, he's a guy that seems determined and seems ready for this challenge. And right now, he's going guns a-blazing, hitting his foot on the pedal. He's ready to roll. It's just the question is, what else is going to come with him? Who else is going to be with him? Because when you look at the team, a guy like Christian Sangfelder, one of the best rookies in all the Atlantic 10 last year. Aside from Eric Pascal, we'll talk about him later. Manny Suarez, a guy that took a lot of strides this season. Antoine Anderson, Nemanja Zarkovic, two players that struggled turning the ball over, improved dramatically. And for Coach Neubauer, and I, I'm curious to ask him this, is that his style of play, a lot of three-pointers, very tough-nosed defensive team. Fordham did not shoot the three well at all this year. They were dead last in the Atlantic 10. So I'm wondering, will Neubauer adjust his style to meet this team, or will he stay put in keeping his fast-paced, run-and-gun, three-pointers, chucking them up? It's going to be a very interesting question, and it's the one that's not going to be answered right away. But still, just based on one practice, this guy already thinks he can win with these players, and that's a good sign going forward. It's definitely going to be a, a little time before we see how the strategy works out and the tactics on offense and defense and all the ins and outs, X's and O's of the game take place. But Coach Neubauer really reminds me of head coach Stephanie Gately of the women's team mm. and their program and their mantra since she's come on board and really been successful. Three postseason appearances in a row for them, and that mantra is, you know, we can shoot the three, we can play offense, we can methodically get a good shot on offense, and then on defense, we're going to play really hard-nosed defense, and that's going to keep us in the game, even if we're shooting 25% from the field. A little different, of course, in the men's game. Of course. But you look at the, some of the statistics, three-point shooting, the last three seasons for Eastern Kentucky, they've been top 12 in the country. There's nearly 350 teams in the country, and they've been top 12 in three-point shooting in terms of made per game, almost like nine three-pointers per game, which... Fordham only six <laughs> this season so maybe the personnel isn't there yet maybe just the strategy needs to be a little different and coach Neubauer like you said I want to clarify what I said not he feet first head first <laughs> into the water for this job here at Fordham and you know 
He's got one assistant coach coming over from Eastern Kentucky, and then I'm curious what his plans are to fill out the rest of his staff. And listen, for all those people out there, there were a lot of questions about the Parker Search Firm, but this was a national search, and that is something that people had long been waiting for. A lot of candidates were considered, and it seems like, at least from first glance, Fordham got a pretty good one just based on what he was able to say and also his track record as well because here's a guy, Drew, that Eastern Kentucky that wasn't afraid to play other top teams. He was willing to get things going for his team no matter how difficult it was. I mean, people were tweeting at him about the game that he beat Chris Paul at Wake Forest. There are a lot of games like that. So regardless of what the schedule is going to look like, the team's going to look like, very similar to Coach Gately in, in that he's ready for challenges and a, a guy that has built programs. And for 10 years, Eastern Kentucky was one of the best mid-majors, one of the best in the Ohio Valley Conference. And this is a guy who legitimately believes Fordham can be at that top tier as well. Another question that I'll have for him is that he played at LaSalle. Facilities at LaSalle are not great. And compared to Fordham, they're on the same level. So he was able to be recruited to LaSalle. Now he has a Fordham situation where facilities have certainly hurt this team. So he should be able to use that as a positive in trying to bring guys in. Because at the end of the day, regardless of facilities, obviously they matter much more in men's basketball than women's basketball. But still, you want to be sold on the school. And more importantly, you want to be sold on the coach. And from what I just heard there, this is the type of guy, I don't know about you, Drew, this is the type of guy that I would want to play for. I was inspired just listening to it. But a lot still needs to be decided. A lot is going to change. But at this point, things have to look up for this Fordham team just because of the fact that after all is said and done and after all the questions with the coaching search, they got a guy who's ready to win here at Fordham and is not just going to use it as that next stop in his coaching career. And, you know, DJ, even if he does use it as the next stop in his coaching career, like I said before, you know, all the best uh, all the best success for Fordham, but the success just hasn't been there in the right. Atlantic 10 Conference. If he goes three, four seasons of winning basketball in the Atlantic 10, he puts Fordham, you know, back on the map uh, in the Atlantic 10. They're, of course, on the map still, but it puts them back on the, towards the top <laughs> of the map. Maybe you get 20 win seasons, things like that nature. And then also you bring in into, na into the nature of, of everything. You, you get a coach. Your next coach could be even good as well, even better as right. well. Uh, nothing against, and you know, of course, none of this has happened. This is all speculation, but I don't think that that should be a concern. He's got the one-year plan. If he goes out and makes the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament and moves on to a to an, uh, new school next year, I'll be happy. <laughs> I think all Fordham fans will be happy, even if we're sitting here you know, in a year doing the same thing with the new coach. But, of course, a lot of ifs there, but Jeff Neubauer seems like a guy who – you know, he believes he can get there, and I, I believe after hearing those words, just like you do, that he can, that this team can get there, you know, in the near future here at Fordham. Jeff Neubauer right now answering some questions for the media. He'll join us a little bit later. The players were here as well. And let's talk about Eric Paschal now because we haven't discussed him too much yet. Right now, he has a list of schools that he can potentially look at. Providence, Villanova are two schools that are rumored. And now Jeff Neubauer did meet with him yesterday, but Eric Paschal not here today because of a previously scheduled recruiting trip. So... What can Neubauer do to try and make Pascal stay? Because in my eyes, Eric Pascal came to Fordham for many reasons, but Tom Pacora and his group initially recruited Pascal when he was young in high school and got him to come here. Now that connection is gone. This is a different coach. It's going to be a different staff, potentially different set of players. So if you're Coach Neubauer, what do you do to try and get the best player from last year to come on back, Drew? Yeah, it's a very difficult situation. First, let me start with that because – Eric Paschal played for the Fordham Rams this season. You wouldn't think you need to, in essence, re-recruit him to play for but the Fordham Rams. You, do. you essentially do, and that's what you have to do, a brand-new coaching regime. I think a lot will have to do with if Coach Neubauer keeps some of the Fordham existing staff on, that will only help the cause for Eric Paschal, assuming that he you know, thought highly of them outside of Coach Tom Pacor, which I believe that he did. Mm -hmm. um, so that would help the cause immensely. And, then, you know, the energy that Coach Neubauer – it just has to connect with, with Eric Pascal, And, you know, that's a person-to-person -person thing. If, if he's just, you know, not a fan of his energy or, or of his style, then unfortunately it might work out. But given the style that we just saw in that couple of minutes of an interview, I suspect that that won't be an issue. And I suspect that, uh, you know, it, it, it might work out for Eric Pascal to be back here for the team. So Ryan Rooms right now addressing the media as well. Rooms is going to be in his final year next year along with Mandel Thomas and Ryan Canty. And, you know, given the fact that this season went the way it did and winning just 10 games, you think about next year and if John Severe plays a full slate of games, Ryan Canty is going to be healthy. Regardless of Eric Paschal, you're going to have Mandel Thomas with another year of experience. You're going to have all the freshmen and Sangfelder and Suarez and Anderson and, and Zarkovich all with another year of experience plus the recruits that will come in. So, Regardless of what happens to this team, 
I'd like to think that the games that were lost, lost this year will be won next year, given the group of guys. You don't lose the two games against Rhode Island. Of course, everything happens with chance in college basketball. You never know, but still, a late tip in against Rhode Island, a game at Rhodey that you lose by a couple points. St. Joe's on the road. There's so many countless games, Drew, that you think with maybe a different regime, another year of experience for these guys, they win. And maybe a different way that things go in non-conference because that could certainly change the game as well. Yeah, a lot of things can go go on and, and happen here. As we're going to be joined by Ryan Rooms right now as our, our first guest here uh, on the post-game uh, or the post-press conference here introducing Jeff Neubauer as the head coach. And, you know, DJ, it's going to be an exciting time, and we'll see from the player's perspective now. Absolutely, Ryan. So you've met Coach Neubauer. You heard what he had to say. What stood out to you the most about a new guy that's coming in here? A lot may change, but what was the most important thing that you heard today in that press conference? Um, the most important thing, you know, I heard today was, you know, his commitment to win. His commitment to, uh, his commitment to us already. You know, he's only been here for a day. He hasn't been there practicing, <laughs> so, you know, I thought that was really, you know, that impressed me a lot. You know, I went to his office and told him, Coach, you know, I've been a captain on this team for the two, last two years, and I still want to be the captain. So he had no problem with that. He said he needed the leaders. So, you know, he brings a lot to the table already. So we're going to see for my senior year how things work out. And he said that he wants to play for you seniors as well, for you, for Mandel, for Ryan. I mean, that has to mean a lot for a guy that's literally been here for a day, Ryan, and already trusts you as a captain. I mean, that certainly says a lot, doesn't it? Mm. I think, you know, he doesn't want to come in and change things, you know. I know we, he has his own system. He wants to, you know, incorporate his ideas and his thoughts, but he doesn't want to change our games, you know. Like, we were working out yesterday, and he didn't tell anybody, you know, do this, do that, and do that. You know, he wants to see what everybody brings to the table, but he wants us all to, you know, do the same thing. He wants us all to shoot. Right. He wants us all to dribble. You know, everybody was going through the same workout, so it was pretty fun. Ryan, I assume yesterday or maybe Sunday you guys find out that Jeff Neubauer is going to be the head coach. And then, like you said, you're practicing or individual workouts is how he terms it. What is that like for you? How, you know, is it, what, what's the emotions like of, you know, going into, to quote, unquote, practice after getting a new coach hours before? It was pretty weird. You know, we never, I never, you know, had that happen. It's kind of like the NBA, you know, when you get, get a new coach or you get a new team, you just, you just are already in the mix. It was pretty, it was pretty it was challenging, actually. You know, we didn't really know what to expect. We didn't know what the workout was going to be. But it was, really, it was really good. You know, everybody was locked in. Everybody was listening. Everybody practiced hard. It was like, you know, it's kind of like he's been there for the past few <laughs> months, actually. You know, no one, it wasn't awkward. It wasn't weird. You know, he just wanted us to go hard. That's what he asked. So, Ryan, Rodney Crawford is one of his assistants that's going to be coming. There's some questions about the rest of the staff. For you and the guys, is it important that some of the old coaches stay on staff? Are you okay if – the slate is clean and everything else will be fine. What do you think about that early on? I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be awkward if they do leave. You know, we built a relationship with these guys for the past three years. They're kind of like, you know, our father figures. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a business, and we all understand that. So if Coach uh, Nubar, you know, uh, clears house, then we're going to have to, you know, just get used to the, the uh, new coaches he brings in. But it'll, if they do stay, it'll be, a, it'll be great for us, you know. They learn things from Coach Nubar. We learn things from Coach Nubar, and we still have that togetherness. So... Ryan, last question from me. In having only known him for, I guess, maybe 72 hours or less, what excites you the most about Jeff Neubauer and Florida men's basketball going forward? His willingness to win already, you know, that excites me. Um, his determinist, uh, he has, he's, he's real determined to, you know, make us play harder. That's all he asks. He doesn't want us to, you know, go out there and do things we're not capable of doing. He just wants us to play hard. I guess he has um, his whole system, is, you know, based on defense and his offensive um his offensive system is pretty great. You know, we've watched film of his past teams. So his, just, his willingness to win, win is just, you know, is, is crazy. You know, we went, I spoke to Coach Crawford. Also, Coach Crawford said he just wants to win. <laughs> and, you know, we want to win. We've been here for three years. We lost a, a lot of games that were, you know, real close. So, you know, we have that. We have that. Uh, we have the, uh, the. We're right there. We're You're right there. We're right there. But, you know, we just need a, somebody to push us over the hump, you know. Absolutely. All right, Ryan, finally, your team won 10 games last year, same as the year before, but you definitely took steps in the right direction. How do you continue that progression, and how do you finally get over the hump and be a team that people really fear in the Atlantic 10? Well, I think we just need to listen. We all, we all just need to lock in, you know, and give in to what coaches bring to the table. You know, we can't have things like we did in the past. Like, we all have to start fresh. We all have to start new. We can't – we have to lock in. We have to be together, you know what I'm saying? We all have to, you know, just give in, buy into the system, basically. And I think that's the, that was one of the problems about the uh, past few years. You know, everybody wasn't all on the same table. So I think what a, for us to win, we have to be on the same table, on the same slate. There you have it, folks. The emotional leader, the guy who's still the captain, Ryan Rooms. Yes, Thanks sir. so much for joining no us. Problem. Appreciate Thank it, my you. friend. So Jeff Neubauer introduced his head coach, Ryan Rooms, giving us some time here.
Certainly going to be an interesting time to see how Rooms he fits into New Bauer's system. He preaches defense, and for a guy like Rooms, who he can block shots, but in the old Pecora system, blocking shots was not a real staple that defense. They they didn't want to take those risks because they struggled to lock down defensively. But when you got Rooms and Canty, those are two trees. You got to take advantage of that size. And I think New Bauer will find a way to get these guys to gel. And the other thing is that Mandel Thomas became one of the best defenders in the Atlantic Ten, hands down. He led the conference in steals per game. Now he gets a defensive coach. I mean, he's going to flourish in addition to his offensive game. So who knows if Thomas will play the point guard position in this new offense. But still, with Thomas, Severe, these guys can shoot from the outside. Zarkovich, as a guy who became more of a three-point shooter, he'll start to get more in the mix. And having Sangfelder out there who can not only bang inside but can also come out to the corner and stick a three. I mean, these are good offensive players. You just have to have a system. That was the problem going forward in the past. They put in the flex offense, Drew, and it finally got going a little bit. But there was no real offensive identity or defensive identity at the end of the day. And I think Neubauer has both of those in his arsenal. I do think so, too. And, you know, it's cliche to say, but defense wins championships. And Neubauer seems to have a heavy defensive, you know, presence, defensive coaching mentality. They don't really defend, or his teams at Eastern Kentucky don't really defend the three-point shot very well. Interior defense, though, is incredible, T near tops of the nation in terms of two-point uh, opponent field goal percentage. And you said it, Ryan Rooms and Ryan Canty, two trees, two <laughs> large individuals, tall individuals in the center of that paint to alter shots, to block shots, and Mandel Thomas, exactly. Maybe one of the most improved defensive players yeah. in the Atlantic 10 uh, this season. That's three top defensive players if they're all healthy. Then you've got a new scheme, the other players buy in, and then you've got a whole team of top defensive players who, if you can knock down the three, set up more open looks, great things can continue to happen here at Fordham. And also a guy whose team's always forced a lot of turnovers. I mean, people like to talk about how great West Virginia was on defense this year, but Eastern Kentucky was number two in the country in forcing turnovers. So the defense should be there. And another big question is, how will John Sevier fare under this new coach? Because John Sevier, one of the most prolific players at Christ the King, Mr. Basketball in New York City, great freshman campaign, averages over 17 a game. Then last year, suspended for the opener, misses seven games after leaving the team for personal absence. Now, he really didn't have that much of a sophomore year. It was, it was in every word, a sophomore slump, Drew. How do you think John Sevier could potentially fare in this offense? And for a guy like Neubauer, who's a no-nonsense guy who's going to hold you in check, and for Severe, who's a guy that's a little bit out of sorts at times, how do you think that will gel? Just from your early prediction, what do you have to say about that? Well, number one, I think it's, it's up to John Severe to give Coach Neubauer you know, a fair chance, which I assume that he will, given the success that he's had here at Fordham. I would assume that he would want to continue to have success. And we'll just have to see how that turns out and how Jeff Neubauer can try and convince that player. So we have Athletic Director Dave Roach with us. Dave, thanks so much for being with us. It's been a wild couple weeks for you from firing a coach to nearly having a coach. You got the guy now in Jeff Neubauer. You mentioned the X factor. That's what you look for in a coach. How did you know that Jeff Neubauer had that X factor? Well, when we're in Atlanta, we interviewed a handful of coaches. And because Jeff had a basketball game that night at home, we uh, Skyped him. I really hadn't been on Skype since my daughter was in Australia <laughs> going to school. Uh, and right away when he came on, you could tell there was something special about him and something different, whether it was an openness, a warmness, and obviously he's had a lot of success, which has kind of led to my first interest in him when we started looking at, you know, 50-plus coaches and who we wanted to consider. And then once he came to campus and we spent a you know, few hours on campus – I knew when we sat in my office, we had about, I guess, two and a half hours to sit there before we were going to the next meeting. And sometimes you say, okay, what are you going to say for two and a half hours? We could have spoke for another two and a half or five hours <laughs> in addition to that. And then we went to dinner that night, and that was just uh, very comfortable, uh, awesome. And when you look at, as I say, his coaching tree and uh, who he's played for, who he's coached with, you know that the guy knows the game and when you kind of look at the results and the different people that I call when I call a, a, f a friend who's a basketball coach who doesn't have a connection and I say to him tell me about Jeff Neubauer and he said I'm a big fan of his the guy's a heck of a coach hmm. uh, then you know that that's really really something and then I called another friend who's a coach who doesn't even know Jeff that much but says I, I heard nothing but great things about him 
and then he, everything kind of starts to fall in place. But the big thing was really getting him up here and having the chance to sit with him and, and talk with him and everything. Dave, uh, a question a lot of people might have is, is the recruiting aspect, a huge aspect uh, in, in collegiate athletics. How do you think that uh, you know Jeff Newbauer coming in will be able to recruit coming from Kentucky, Virginia roots, uh, West Virginia, um, you know, coming to the New York area? How do you think that will apply here uh, to Fordham? Well, I think a, a couple of things. First of all, when you're at Richmond and West Virginia, you're recruiting from all over. And Jeff is a bright guy, and he's going to get it. And he'll have somebody who will get him into and introduce him to all the people in New York that he needs to know. And when he fills out his staff, he'll have somebody who has New York connections or who has been a very successful recruiter in this area. So when I was at Brown as a young AD in 1991, seems like yesterday, I, <laughs> the first coach I ever hired was for men's soccer. And I hired a coach who was at the University of South Carolina. And right away, everybody said, oh, South Carolina, how's he going to learn to coach it in the Ivy League, et cetera, et cetera. The guy was in the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament within three years. Wow. Good coaches adapt. They know what they're doing. They have good people helping them, and they get it done. And one of the things that will happen is our st own student athletes get to know a coach and see what he's like. They will be the greatest sellers in terms of our program and what's going on. Dave, for you, now the, the process is finally over. You can, eat, you can sleep, you can eat. What was the greatest challenge for you through these last couple of weeks in trying to pick a new head coach? There's part of me that wants to say social media, but I'm not <laughs> sure if that's a good idea to say that. Because uh, the interesting thing is, um, you know, I'm reading where we interviewed so-and-so and how he said we interviewed him. Mm -hmm. We didn't interview him. There's a lot of misinformation that's out yeah, there. Yeah, so you start looking at things. And, you know, my wife was went away for a couple of days when I was real busy, calls me up and says, hey, I just read the paper, such and such a paper, and it says so-and-so interviewed. I thought you said you weren't interviewing. I said, well, we didn't. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of different things. Um, and I think it's important that when you're looking for a coach, you move it quick. Because if you notice, you know, Texas is open. Alabama's open, DePaul was open, George Mason was open, and as things move around, you want to make sure that you can get the guy you want. Right. And if the days of saying we're going to put together a committee of 10 or 12 people, we're going to bring a bunch of people to campus, and it's going to take a month, those days are over, uh, especially at this level. And I realized that right away. And having Parker executive search for me was phenomenal. Because to do what they did, logistics-wise, contacting people, getting the information in, it was just tremendous. And it really took a lot of the burden off of us to where we could just zero in on, on the coaches. I could call people and find out about people and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I've been doing this 25 years, and it's a little different all the time. And I hope I'm the kind of person that I always adapt with what's going on and know the latest things and and how to do stuff. Dave, last question from me. Coach Newbauer, his one-year plan, jumping headfirst into it, trying to give Fordham the most success as quickly as possible. What are your thoughts on uh, the ambition and the challenge uh, that Coach Newbauer has undertaken just in the f first you know, couple days here at Fordham? Well, I mean, we've talked a lot about that, and I think he's talked with our student-athletes. I mean, I happen to think we've got pretty good talent here. Oh, yeah, we absolutely. do right now. And when I look at the league and all that and everything, so that fits right in with what we want to accomplish. And what he and I will be on the same page in terms of that and everything. And, and I think we could have some uh, very good success right away. And that helps you build a program, and from there it kind of snowballs. But, you know, when you think of the, the seniors coming back and everything, we want to be fair to them. They're pretty good. Well, they're real good. Mm -hmm. So we want to be good. So, Dave, was there a moment that you knew that Jeff Newbauer would be your next head coach? Was, was Sunday the first time that you actually met him when he came to campus? Yeah, in person. We had done the Skype. And it might have been. <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> He's smiling. Come on, Father Mache. <laughs> I'm just a serious guy. Beeline guy, one of the best. <laughs> there you go. Wow. 
<laughs> See, I, there you go. I, I, Yeah. The French Jesuits came here in 1846. Where'd they come from? Eastern Kentucky. Wow. It was meant there to be. It. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. It seems like it all magically was put together. Absolutely. Capish. 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 Father McShane. The ringing endorsement from Father McShane. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, Dave, to work with a guy like that and to, to see how excited he is, I mean, not exactly the biggest sports guy, but still, what does it mean to you to see how excited he is about this new head coach? Well, I said when I first got here, people said, why did you decide to come and how's it going? Uh, the thing that I like about, you know, Father McShane is when I say to him, I'm thinking about doing whatever. He's like, you're the guy, do what you need to do. <laughs> and as a director of athletics, your life really revolves around what the president is like and whether they trust you to do the things that you need to do. So there you have it. A couple more questions on our end. Just in terms of the staff, there's some questions right now, and that's obviously up to Coach Neubauer, but do you expect things to just be clean slate, start over, or do you expect maybe some of the guys to be in the mix potentially? Touch up to Coach Newbauer. Up to Coach Newbauer, all I him. I think he's going to take a little bit of time and look at that and kind of see, you know, what's needed and so forth and so on. But in any sport where I hire a head coach, the staff is entirely up to the head coach. And for Eric Paschal, uh, he has a certain list of schools that he can look at. How tough was that for you guys in knowing that potentially one of your best players from last year may not be coming back? Well, when we sat down with Eric and his dad, I said to them that we want, we want what's best for Eric. And – I'm never going to be the kind of AD that says we're not going to release you. We're not going to let you go and look because right. we want what's best for that particular student athlete. And we've had great conversations. Uh, they know what Fordham is like. They really like Fordham. Uh, Eric had a chance to meet with Coach Neubauer yesterday. And uh, we'll see what happens. And whatever Eric decides, we're going to support. Love to have him stay here because mm -hmm. I think we've really got some things going. But we want him – to do what's best for him and what he believes in. Dave, lastly, this team had 10 victories last year. How does Coach Neubauer take these guys and help them continue to go forward and be a team in the Atlantic 10 that can really make some noise next year? I think that you kind of build a rapport with them, uh, make them all certainly believe in each other and believe in the coaching staff. And when I coached, I used to say that, uh, and I coached swimming, I could be the most physically sound and, or most physiologically sound base coach but if you don't believe in what we're doing, then we're not going to be very good. I could probably not be very good, you know, physiology-wise, mm -hmm. but a great psychologist and get people going, and we'll be successful. And I think in Coach Newbauer, we got someone who's both. Dave Roach, athletic director here at Fordham. Thank you so much for the time, and thank best you. of luck going forward with everything. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So Dave Roach giving us a few minutes here. Fordham University men's basketball press conference, and Coach Newbauer is going to join us in just a little while. And how about that, Drew? A Skype interview, and for the first time meeting him was Sunday. I mean, if that's not 21st century coaching search, I don't know what is. And at the end of the day, they got a guy that they believed in right now, and I think that's what's most important. And for Father McShane, he had some comments that were going on right in front of us here. He seems like a guy who knows what he was talking about as well, and he loved the fact that Neubauer comes from the Beeline coaching tree, that the French Jesuits were originally from – Eastern Kentucky. I mean, and that they're buried right next to uh, this window. <laughs> literally, right if you outside walk outside this window. this window. So all that for him is certainly something that looks good. But for Father McShane and the rest of the administration, I mean, to be this gung ho over a guy is certainly encouraging for everybody else watching this because at times there seems like there has been that disconnect between the administration and the coaching staff. But right now, this is as good as it's been in a couple of years for sure, Drew. No, very, very encouraging for sure. And, you know, great things certainly ahead for this team. So Jeff Newbauer joins us now. Jeff, DJ Sixmith here alongside Drew Casey. You heard a little bit of our play-by-play -play from up there. You're now officially a Fordham University men's basketball coach. I got to start off with the Skype interview because Dave Roach just told us about that. What was it like interviewing for this job, not even physically meeting the people you'd be working with until Sunday? Yeah, that was the first step, and that was very unusual. I'd never <laughs> done anything like it. Um, but obviously very convenient. Um, and I, I just want to say Dave Roach has been tremendous throughout this entire process. He has been very straightforward. Um, you know, everything that he has said is, has come true to this point, and uh, I really look forward to working with him. 
coach. Uh, no criticizing questions coming from the color analyst yet, <laughs> <laughs> as you mentioned. Yet as, to be determined, yet though. To I'm be sure it's coming. <laughs> well, maybe at some point. Um, but I'd, li I'd like to touch on the emotional roller coaster that you've gone through maybe these last 72 hours. What is it like leaving behind Eastern Kentucky, a great program that you've built and helped succeed immensely, and now a new family here at Fordham in, in the course of, you know, you say 72 hours, but I assume it's probably even less than that. Yeah, so first of all, great challenge here at Fordham and uh, very happy to be here. And um, so there's so many reasons why I'm here and so many reasons why I'm happy to be here. Obviously, the opportunity to coach in New York City, the opportunity to coach at Fordham University and recruit great student athletes, um, and then the challenge of where Fordham is right now. I mean, that, that's just as big a reason. Um, let's take this program and let's do some things that have never been done here at Fordham. Mm. That's what we're going to talk to our team about. Now, you also mentioned the emotion of leaving EKU. We just have super young men down there, and that's why we've been able to win is the fact that our locker room is really full of guys that a person would want to coach. And, you, you know, we're on so many – as a basketball program and team, we're on so many planes and trains and automobiles and film sessions and practices that if you surround yourself with guys that you don't want to be around, it's not very much fun. But at EKU, we had the, we had the opposite. We had guys that um, just made you – very happy to come to work every day so it is hard to leave those guys your wife of course being from new jersey she gets to come back home and she wasn't here today but how did you guys ultimately come to this decision and know that fordham was the right choice at the right moment for you after spending 10 seasons at eastern kentucky i'm sure you'd had offers from other schools why did fordham finally make sense for you and the rest of your family well all the reasons that i've mentioned so far and one that i didn't mention that i probably should have thrown in earlier the Atlantic 10 Conference. Mm. Um, you think about the A-10 and the level of basketball that's being played in this conference right now. Um, you know, only three teams in the NCAA tournament this year. Um, but, you know, it, it's been so much more successful in recent years. So the point is, we will be playing against some of the best teams in the country. Those are the challenges that we want to take on as a basketball coach and a basketball program. And uh, so the A-10 is another reason in addition to our, everything I've already talked about. Coach, the, your ambition, your mantra that you spoke of during the introductory press conference just a few moments ago was, we're going to jump right in. We're going to go after this in year number one. The seniors deserve to go out, you know, with a bang. The ambition, the challenge, is that something that you have always had in your coaching philosophy as an, an assistant and as a head coach at Eastern Kentucky? Yeah, you know what, that's actually a great question because, you know, I think as people we are who we are. However, really in the last two and a half years, this whole idea of taking on challenges and enjoying the process has really become important to me, more important. And so uh, it's something that has evolved within me, and I think I'm a much better coach because of it. Um, we've got to look forward to challenges. We don't want VCU to come in here and play poorly. We want VCU or Dayton or LaSalle to come into this gym and play as well as they possibly can, and we want to win. <laughs> so, you know, that's what we're after. Coach, you played at LaSalle, and comparatively to Fordham, facilities are not up there with the VCUs and the Daytons of the world. So how do you recruit a player to come to Fordham despite the facilities? How do you overcome that challenge initially and sell the rest of Fordham and sell your philosophies as a, as a head coach? Yeah, I think recruiting is all about finding your niche. And so we've got to sell the great things that Fordham has going for it. First of all, the fact that the degree that you get from Fordham is pretty special. I yeah. mean, this isn't just some school. I mean, this is an elite academic institution. Secondly, this school is in New York City. And so we're going to, you know, if we focus on, hey, Rose Hill Gym has fewer seats than VCUs, are, there's no point in focusing on that. Right. Instead, let's focus on what's special about Fordham, what's special about New York City, and we're going to sell that. Coach, uh, a big question. You've announced that you're going to keep your head assistant coach from Eastern Kentucky on the staff here. But the question remains, the, the rest of the spots, what's your mentality going forward with that? You know, you obviously have more of an existing staff that you had at Eastern Kentucky. And, of course, you have the staff, except for head coach Tom Pacora, is still in mix in the waiting. Um, what's your mentality? What's the process you think you're going to go through to try and determine that? Yeah, so at this point, you know, the less I say about that, the better, just meaning that it is a process. And uh, Rodney is a guy that's just so good. He's uh, worked with us for three years at Eastern Kentucky. He is such a good coach, such a good person. Uh, he, he's just so powerful. So uh, really happy that Rodney was able to make it 
here for the press conference. Um, and then we'll figure the rest out. That's my job um, to figure the rest out here as quickly as we can. I'm sure you've already been asked a million questions about Eric Paschal, his future, and everything else. But I just want to ask about the meeting that you guys had the other day. What was special about Eric Paschal? What immediately jumped out at him? Obviously, you know about his accolades on the court, but what did you like about him as an individual who potentially could be on your team next season? Yeah, I think the most impressive thing about Eric was how much research he had done on me. And this was, you know, maybe noon yesterday, a little bit after noon. Um, he had done a ton of research. He had watched film on our Eastern Kentucky team. He really, <laughs> he knew a lot. Like, I didn't have to say much. He had already looked into my past. So, you know, I think that was pretty impressive that, that he had taken the initiative and tried to figure out uh, who I was. Coach, last question from me. Your team in Eastern Kentucky, at least, it seems like you like to shoot the three-point shot, make your free throws, play hard-nosed defense, uh, you know, in the interior. Is that a strategy that you think you'll carry forward to Fordham? Uh, you know, you haven't had a whole lot of experience with the personnel yet, but is that is you think you're going to stick with that strategy? Yeah, so first of all, what my job is is to adjust our style to our personnel. And so it's not about my system or anything like that. It's about winning. And so we'll figure out who the five best players are, and we'll adjust our style to that personnel. With that being said, our teams typically have made a lot of threes, um, so we do spread the court, put multiple shooters on the court all times. We do need to have great value for the ball as well, and that's one thing that Fordham did struggle with last year. The value for the basketball wasn't as good as it could be, and so that's what we're coaching right now. That's what we're working on. So we will take care of those things at the offensive end. Defensively, in the half court, we do play more aggressively than any team in the country. So our Eastern Kentucky team this year was second in the country in steals, and only West Virginia had more steals. West Virginia pressed for 40 minutes of every game. <laughs> um, so in the half court, we are just absolutely not allowing teams to make passes. We're not allowing them to run their plays, their system, whatever. We are making them play one-on-one -on -one basketball in the half court. Coach, you got the opportunity to see your players on the floor yesterday. You said there were some special guys out there. What made you believe that, and how can you channel these guys together and get them to win at the rate that your programs did at Eastern Kentucky? Yeah, and when you say special guys, I, I think the thing that stood out more was just their approach to yesterday. So they were eager to be on the court. They were looking forward to being instructed. They were, they were open to improvement. So as long as we can continue that mentality and that attitude and take it day by day and improve every single day, then this group has a good chance. Coach, we talked to Ryan Rooms, and he's been the captain of this team the last couple of years. He came into your office. He says, I'm the captain. I want to be the captain. You said, okay, let's do it. Why did you believe in rooms, and how are you going to approach it in changing some things but also keeping some things the same? What will be the greatest challenge with that? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, our phrase with leadership um, is just that leadership does not discriminate. And what we mean by that is it can't just be the head coach being a leader within a basketball program. It cannot just be the seniors leading. Instead, if we have a freshman that has a little bit of leadership ability, we need to feel that. If we have an assistant coach that can lead, we need that. And so we're looking for leadership from every different direction, and uh, I do think Ryan can help us there. Coach, finally, we'll get you out of here on this one. You mentioned the one-year plan. Without getting into the specifics, what's the most exciting part about that one-year plan and potentially achieving the goals that you set out and fixing this problem here at Fordham that's persisted a couple decades? I do think the most exciting part of it are the seniors. All right, so Mandel rooms who you mentioned and then also ryan canty those three guys are guys that i think are very well liked within this program and i think their teammates will really play for them for this one season there you have it folks jeff newbauer new head coach fordham university coach thank you so much appreciate thank the you time guys. so jeff newbauer officially the head coach here at fordham university and appreciate dave roach and him coming over and drew a lot of good things to say and for a guy that has won a lot of games elsewhere with a program that hasn't won a lot of games. He is excited, and that's the type of excitement and belief that you're going to need in this team because already what he said about the three seniors, these are well-liked guys. I want to respect them. I want to win for them. And, like, he, you, you asked him a good question in what his style is going to be. He said he's going to fit his style of players he has, but he's going to demand great defense from them, and that's something Fordham hasn't had. So a lot of good stuff that he just had to say to us.
What do you think was particularly special about what, co what Coach Neubauer said? The thing that was most special to me was right in one of the first couple of questions we asked him, and his answer involved basically saying that we are trying to create a family of great individuals that mm. have nothing to do with their basketball talents or anything else, that they're great people, good people to be around, well-liked people. That is exactly the philosophy, again, I said it earlier, of Stephanie Gately and the women's program, and they've had great success built around just everyone, you know, caring for each other. And it also in lines with Fordham's, you know, characteristics and, and its course. mission statement Jesuit as well. Values Jesuit and everything values and everything else. values, everything like that. So I was very impressed by that. It starts with that. And then the defense aspect, again, defense usually, you know, it's cliche to say, defense wins championships. You can stay in the basketball game if you play solid defense, even if you don't shoot the ball particularly well. And you know if they're going to stick to the three-point shot, you only have to make, you can make less shots and still get more points, obviously. So I, those two things intrigue me, the defense and the family that this Fordham men's basketball team is, try, is going to try and become more of. And I think we really learned a lot today from Dave Roach as, as well as Coach Neubauer in the meeting with Eric Paschal and how much research he had done on Coach Neubauer. He watched film of Eastern Kentucky, he had questions ready. And even what Roach had to say about we want the best for Eric Paschal. At the end of the day, yes, this guy could potentially be a great player for our program, but we want what is going to be best for him. And it's going to be very intriguing to watch how things shake out. But at the end of the day, it seems like both these guys, and Roach and Neubauer, are just fine the way things will go. Same thing with Eric Paschal. He really does like this school. He's a great guy away from basketball who understands that there's more to life than just college basketball. He's a guy that dreams of playing in the pros. He said it to us. He will continue to say it. And, yes, maybe a program like Villanova or Providence could potentially get you there a little bit easier. But being the guy who changes Fordham for life, whether it's a head coach or a player, you will always be heralded as that person. I mean, look at guys like Digger Phelps. One season here. One season. Tom Penders. All these guys who've had success here in a program that hasn't had much of it are still held up in such high regard. So if Neubauer can do it, if Pascal remains, whoever's on the team, the point being whoever gets it done here, however long it takes, will forever be a champion in the eyes of Fordham fans. Exactly, whether it be one year like Digger Phillips or it takes five years, a couple of winning seasons in the mix there. But going back to the Eric Paschal thing, it's very impressive. As you know, the new head coach here said, you do the research on him <laughs> and you are almost interviewing him or asking him questions. That's very, very uh, promising, I'd say. You know, co going forward, Eric will obviously do what's best for him. And I, you know, fully support what David Roach says and fully, you know, say that, that that is the strategy you have to take in a situation like this, especially if you are Fordham. It goes in line with the philosophy of family that we heard from earlier. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's promising to see. We'll see what Eric Paschal eventually decides to do, but it looks promising given what we heard here today. So Jeff Neubauer, the new head coach of Fordham University men's basketball, his era officially begins today as he met the media and had his assistant coach and Coach Crawford introduce Drew, let's wrap things up here as we're winding down. The press conference has happened. We've talked to players, coaches, administrators. Going forward for this Fordham team, what is most important in your eyes in getting this program back to a legitimate status? What needs to happen in the next couple months before any basketball is played at the Rose Hill Gym? The players need to buy into Jeff Neubauer and his system, and it seems like given the words based on the first get-together yesterday, it seems like they are going to. Of course, it will depend on, you know, Pascal and, and the roots that are coming in and, and how the leaders, the seniors for next season, you know, sort of take the reins and help Neubauer. It'll depend on his staff, you know. It all depends on the players' reactions to Neubauer's initial decisions, in my opinion. First impressions speak a thousand words. It's true. It seems like the impressions thus far have been great. They've reacted positively with most of the players. We obviously can't speak for all of the minds of all the individuals on this Fordham men's basketball team, but I'd say the most important thing is for Jeff Neubauer just to be himself. And that way people will buy in. If, unfortunately, people don't, you know, want, don't want to buy in, maybe they'll, they'll part ways and go to other schools. But if the most number of players on this Fordham team can buy in, that will lead to success in the quickest fashion for this Fordham men's basketball team. And I think something that really stood out here is that Jeff Neubauer is legitimately excited about being this head coach. He doesn't feel like a second, third, fourth option. Whatever he was, he is the guy right now. And, you know, there was a lot of excitement about when Coach Pecora came here five years ago and it didn't work out. But when you look at the differences in these coaches, Coach Neubauer has won a lot more games at a higher level than Pecora ever did. He's been to the NCAA tournament. He's been under John Beeline. And while Pecora was with Jay Wright, this is a guy that is spoken so highly of and really truly has a system too. That was the one knock on Pecora. He just wasn't a system guy and the X's and O's lacked at times. This does not seem like a coach is going to have any trouble with that whatsoever. 
and a coach that is ready to blend his personality with the personality of his players. And regardless of what happens with the coaching staff, you know, at, at times people would say maybe it's better to keep Coach Parada, keep Coach Morton around just to have a smoother transition. But, you know, maybe at the end of the day, Drew, wiping the slate clean may just be the best thing because Ryan Rooms talked about how it would be awkward for them all to leave. I think it would be more awkward if one or two of them stayed on the staff because you'd always have that Pecora connection. And if I'm Coach Newbauer, I understand the importance of those guys and what they did for the team, but this is his coaching staff, this is his era, and it would be a little bit strange to have those ties directly on the bench. Now, if it's somebody in the office, it's a different story, but still, I think it's going to be very intriguing to see how things happen, and I won't be surprised at all if he wipes the slate clean. Yeah, you know, I agree with you, DJ. It might be more awkward in a sense if you keep a couple of people on the Fordham staff, but, you know, I think they need to at least keep one or two personnel on staff because of the fact that you, you need to have a connection. You need that connection, the old with the new, fuse together mm -hmm. and create the best product as quickly as possible. But with all that said, it's totally up to Jeff Neubauer. And to go back to the system, you know, he said he has a system or he alluded to the fact that, you know, we, we tend to shoot a lot of threes. We, we shoot free throws. We try to force turnovers. We play hard, you know, hard defense, you know, when we get uh, past the half court. Um, but, but the most thing that you touched on earlier was that, that system goes out the window. It's what we have here, here and now, to be the most successful as quickly as possible. So it's not a coach and a system necessarily in my eyes. As Coach Neubauer said, it's the players and then the coach creating or adapting a system to fit them and make them be the most successful as quickly as possible. So Jeff Neubauer came to Fordham for the challenge. He starts with that challenge today. He is a new Fordham University men's basketball coach, and that will do it for us here at Fordham University. For my partner, Drew Casey, thank you very much. The Forts, Fordham Sports Info Department, Joe DeBerry, Scott Kwiatkowski, Merrill Servin, Bob Ahrens, the executive producer of WFEV Sports. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We'll see you next time here on FordhamSports.com.